What is up guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm just an American on a journey to discover my English and Irish ancestry. Over the past few days, I've been reacting to a number of different videos um, about the UK, England, and Britain. And uh, I'm going to continue this uh, journey for a really long time. My goal is to know anything and everything I can about the places my ancestors were from, which, which is England and Ireland. So um, anyways, guys, um, today we're going to be reacting to 10 reasons why Queen Elizabeth II is a badass. I mean, unfortunately, she passed away. Um, but um, I figured this would be a good video to continue um, my exploration of who she was as a person and a ruler. I did react to a previous video, uh, my last video, um, was the first time I've really looked into Queen Elizabeth th at all. And um, she was a pretty interesting person, the few things that I do know about her now, but I've got a long way to go to where I really understand who she was and what she was about. So um, in the last video, I learned that she was loved by 80% of the British population. Uh, that's at least the the stat they gave, and uh, that's pretty high. Um, but uh, I learned that she was a workaholic, <laughs> uh, or she she didn't take much time off. I learned she was a pretty stoic person. Um, it just a number of different uh, numbers and stuff, but it was really interesting. So if you're interested, please go check out that video. But let's go on. Let's uh, continue learning about this larger than life woman, the Queen. Queen Elizabeth, uh, she did. She passed away. I'm sure everybody's heard by now. She just passed away at the age of 96. Anyways, guys, let's get started. Ten reasons why the Queen was a badass. Why doesn't the Queen need a passport or driver's license? Can she really shoot a gun in real life? And does Her Majesty really drink up to four cocktails every day? Wait, she was driving, but she doesn't need a driver's license. Hmm, that's interesting. I mean, she is the queen, so it wouldn't surprise me if she could just hop hop behind the wheel of a car and just drive anywhere. What are, is, a, is there gonna be a police officer that would actually, you know, like give her a ticket for not driving with a license? I can't imagine that being the case. Whether you agree with that or not, I just can't imagine it being the case, so. Day? Hi, I'm Joy, and in the name of the queen, let's start. Number 10. I'm still alive. Queen Elizabeth II is 94 now, and there's no doubt that she's the longest reigning monarch in the world. We have a theory about what's helped her stay healthy and clear headed all this time. It's her self irony. 70 a couple years. of years ago, when Northern Ireland's Deputy Present. First Minister Martin McGuinness asked the Queen if she was well, Her Majesty didn't hesitate to answer. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm still alive. Because <laughs> when you're over 90 years old, you learn to yeah. appreciate the basic things. Another example of Her Majesty showing irony about her age happened in Malta. During the Commonwealth Summit, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau delivered the toast to the Queen, honoring her more than 60 years on the throne. And Her Majesty's answer was simply amazing. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister of Canada, for making <laughs> me feel so old. But the truth is that the Queen is not just fine in her advanced years, she's still really active. And she does things other people her age might not still be... Yeah, by the way, she was. I mean, that last video I saw, it said she had something like, the year she was 91 years old, she had, I think, that was a, obviously five years ago, I guess, 2017, I guess it was. She had 292 public engagements, if I'm not mistaken, that was the correct number. That's like, that's like a public engagement every day and a half. Like, I, w I don't know if I could handle that schedule. That would be, that's tough for a 91 year old. She was, she must have had some energy. She must have had some energy. Be able to do like number nine, drive her car and ride a horse. At the age of 93, the queen was spotted driving her Range Rover at the Royal Windsor Horse Show. Unfortunately, we don't have a video of her latest drive, but this photo <laughs> looks very convincing. Wow. Or this one, when she drove with her corgis recently. Oh, and yeah, the uh, steering wheel on the right side, I, that's so fascinating to me. I mean, I guess British people coming over here would be the same for steering wheel on the uh, left. That's, that's crazy. Even though you probably already know that, and I already knew that was how you guys uh, drove your vehicles. It's still just, it's interesting to see that. I can't imagine driving 
on the uh, left side of the road. It's just, <laughs> yeah, we get used to what we get used to, though, what we're, what we're raised into, though, so. Recently. Pretty cool, huh? The story about how exactly she learned to drive a car is pretty impressive. And we'll get back to it soon, so stay tuned, folks. That is impressive she would drive her own car. The queen doesn't even need a a license to drive. Any ideas why? Oh, it's simple. Because all the driver's licenses in the UK are issued in the queen's name. So it's really... Oh, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, I guess that makes sense. If, if, If basically... She does. She issues the driver's license in her name. Then, how she issues herself a driver's license? Yeah, that makes sense. Really unnecessary for Her Majesty to have a license or even a passport. Yep, the Queen doesn't have one wow. because she herself is a living passport. Wow. An even more impressive fact about Her Majesty is that she can still ride a horse. Just a couple of months ago, the monarch was spotted on a ride at Windsor Castle. Because what else can you do in isolation, right? That, that is crazy. A 90-some-year-old riding a horse? Like, seriously. <sighs> I'm guessing she was helped up there, but still, just the fact... I mean, that's, that's a big deal. Um, you know, riding a horse can be tricky for even much younger people. So... Um, Someone being that age, well, that's that's impressive. That's impressive. Her Majesty's love of horses goes way back to her childhood, and there's only one animal that the Queen loves more. <laughs> Number sh- eight, short dog. Her Majesty's Corgi Army. Oh my good! Oh my goodness! Are you serious? <laughs> Look at those short little dogs, Everyone man. Everyone knows that the monarch adores wow. corgis, but. Do you know how many dogs she's owned? Five? Ten? Twenty? Nope, nope, and nope. How about more than thirty? Thirty? Yes. During her long and intense things? reign, the Queen has taken care of <laughs> dozens of the adorable dogs. Oh my According goodness. According to Vanity Fair, the Queen got her first ever corgi wow. at the age of seven. And since then, she fell in love with the species. The Queen <laughs> walks her army every day. Walks she her takes army. them everywhere with her, even <laughs> on flights. She also organized a special royal diet for them with their personal chef. She's bought them tons of individual Christmas stockings with treats to pamper them with. (laughs) And no one is allowed to forbid the dogs from doing anything. Oh, I bet those... Exactly. Anything. I bet those are the most spoiled dogs in the entire world. Yeah. I bet. As the author Brian Hoey, who visited the palace, wrote in his book, Not in Front of the Corgis, the dogs were not fully house trained. So oh, a man. supply of soda water and blotting paper is kept at hand just in case of any little accidents. The royal family, the royal rules for the dogs. Number seven, the first monarch to send an email. Well, that's a pretty badass achievement. The queen sent her very first email back in 1976. 1976? Most people didn't even... 1976. I didn't even know they had email back then. Um, I didn't... I didn't even send my first email till I was probably... I think I was 22. Because that's when I got my first computer. Growing up, um, you know, my, my dad, he didn't want... Um, oh, it's not even... He didn't want... It was just kind of like... It was a different world. I was... You know, it was a different time period. Not that I'm really, not that I'm old, but I'm I'm definitely not young either. Um, but yeah, uh, so, you know, I knew pe- I knew quite a few people with computers, but my dad just never used them, and so never bought one. And then even once I turned an, turned an adult and moved out, I because I had never had access to them, I I just really didn't even bother getting one and. And then when I was 22, about 23, I think, I, I decided to um, get a friend of mine to build one for me. But anyway, that's, sorry for rambling, just interesting. Even know the internet existed back in those days, while Her Majesty operated it from an army base. Uh, if this doesn't yeah. impress okay, that you, makes sense. what about this that makes next sense. fact? Even before sending her first email, the Queen sent a message to the moon. It was a message of goodwill during the Apollo 11 landing. The astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin took a silicon disk to the moon that contained messages from various world leaders. The Telegraph recalls the two sentences that the monarch wrote. 
On behalf of the British people, I salute the skill and courage which have brought men to the moon. May this endeavor increase the knowledge and well being of mankind. Will the Queen send her message to Mars in the near future? We'll see. Number 6. The Photo Bombed Selfie. Riding cars and horses and sending a message to the moon is indeed impressive. But do you know what can be even more badass? Being modern and ready to photobomb random selfies. During the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, the Queen didn't hesitate to surprise two members of the Australian women's hockey team. Her Majesty noticed them taking a selfie, and she just got in the shot. <laughs> Oh man, if I if I took that, like I can imagine they took that photo and didn't have a clue, and then they they, well, this I don't I guess that was a digital camera, so maybe they saw it right away. But I can imagine taking that, not realizing she was there, and then like, what the world? <laughs> oh man, that's, that's funny. Cause why not? Ah, the queen photo bombed our selfie. Hockey player Jade Taylor wrote on Twitter. Personally, to me, this. Guys, what are these soldiers called? These are these are like the soldiers I recognize from. They're always around the Queen. They're always at, like at Buckingham Palace, I believe, and whatnot. And they're not like regular. Just that's not like the uh, uniform for re regular military. Uh, so that, that must, I mean. What do you call these people? These people are obviously these. I guess you, do you call them soldiers? These soldiers are um, obviously uh, guards for the queen, right? I mean, or or the whole royal family, I guess maybe. What do you call them? And are they the only ones that wear these big uh, fluffy hats? I don't know what you call these things. Um, anyway, just curious. I I just uh, yeah, just curious about that. This photo is both cool and creepy at the same time, because it gives you the feeling that Her Majesty is always watching you. Am I the only one here? Number 5. Her Majesty's Daily Alcohol Intake A couple of years ago, there was a weird accidental rumor spread by the Business Insider and Independent. Listen, it's hilarious. According to these sources, Her Majesty starts her day with a gin cocktail. During lunch, she continues with wine, and she ends the day with a dry martini and a glass of champagne, which makes four cocktails Damn. in total every day. <laughs> Despite the fact that the Queen indeed enjoys a drink, her routine was super exaggerated. This is what the former royal chef Darren McGrady tried to clarify in his later interview to CNN. She'd be pickled if she drank that much. All I said was that she likes a gin and dubonet. That's her favorite drink. The chef blamed the misunderstanding on his accent and a very bad phone connection. Hmm. Can we trust this man? Or does Her Majesty indeed have a Churchill style habit of drinking? You decide. Num uh, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. She lived in 96. Uh, you know, obviously, not being an alcoholic is a good thing, but. You know, it's a known fact that now, granted, I don't really drink much. I have maybe a beer every once in a while or something like that, but I'm not a big drinker. Um, but it, it's a known fact that, you know, having a, a drink here and there, you know, uh, alcoholic drink is uh, actually seems to be a life extension activity. So uh, obviously not drinking much, but drinking a drink here or there, having a glass of wine, things like that. Like, you know, it would surprise me if she did. Had, you know, had maybe had a daily drink or two. Wouldn't surprise me. Number four, James Bond cameo. Good evening, Mr. Bond. Good evening, Her Majesty. Especially for the London Olympic ceremony, Her Majesty agreed to film a hilarious sketch with Daniel Craig as James Bond, and with her corgis, of course. In this sketch, the Queen and Bond are in a helicopter flying over the London arena and jump with a parachute straight into the stadium. <laughs> Add James Bond's epic theme song to this and you get the perfect badass arrival at the London Arena. Of course, the Queen didn't really jump, but I kind of have a feeling that she could have actually done that jump. Number four, she knows how to shoot a gun. That was funny. Seriously, check out this photo. It was taken during a royal what? visit to Surrey's National Shooting Center when Her Majesty couldn't resist and fired this massive battle rifle. I know what you're thinking. It was all for show. 
Just take a look at this officer's face. He's smiling like he does. Oh my goodness. Did she really shoot that at her age? I mean, I don't think she was like, I think she was probably in her 80s there, I'm guessing. I don't think this last few years, but maybe. But, um, you know, like that gun would have some kick, you know. You know, that, that gun would have some kick for even a, you know, a younger grown man. So, you know, boom, boom, boom. You know, I can't imagine. Eh, maybe. She's strong enough, I guess. Uh, that's pretty cool if <laughs> she did. That, that'd be something. All right. Who knows? Doesn't believe the queen can actually shoot a gun. I believe she can shoot a gun, but the question is, firearms is she shooting something like childhood. that in her it's age? It's been said in the Channel 4 documentary that Winston Churchill sent King George VI his Tommy gun as a gift. The young Elizabeth was only 14 at the time, but she was so excited about the Tommy gun that she asked her father if she could practice shooting, and he totally approved. So, next time you're doubting Her Majesty's temper, think twice. I wonder if she needs permission to carry a gun, or does it work the same as with it. a passport and driver's license? I doubt it. Or maybe I mean, the gun in the Queen's hands is permission itself. Yeah, I bet she could just carry it Number if she two, wanted to. Alone against an intruder. Imagine the Queen sleeping peacefully in her gorgeous chamber in Buckingham Palace, when all of a sudden a strange man walks into her room. His hand was bleeding, and his look was far from decent. This was the real tense situation that wait, took wait, wait, place wait. in 1982. How in the world did someone break into wherever the queen was? Like, what? I would think that she would be literally the most guarded person. I, I just, am I wrong? Isn't she like literally one of the most guarded people on the planet? How in the world would someone break in? That's... That's something, man. I don't know how that happened. And luckily, Queen Elizabeth was bold enough to deal with it all by herself. Well, at least for 10 minutes. The Queen quickly realized that it would take some time before anyone would come to the chamber and help her, so she started to chat with the intruder in order to play for some time. They talked about multiple things, about the intruder's family life, his four kids, his personal problems, and stuff like that. Finally, help arrived and the man was arrested. Soon after, it became clear that he'd broken into the palace twice. The first time, he secretly drank from Prince Charles's white wine bottle and left the palace unseen. It was confirmed that the intruder had a mental disorder, and he was placed in the psychiatric hospital. Now, this next point is so bad. So, how did he get in there? How did he, how did he get past the guards? That's... Number one, served in World War II. Did you know this fact? At the age of 18, the Queen, or should I rather say, the then Princess, joined the Women's Auxiliary Territorial Service. Yes, young Elizabeth wow. served as an ambulance driver and a mechanic in World War II. And that's where she learned how to drive so well. Wow. Another interesting thing <laughs> okay. is that her father, who yeah. was the King of the United Kingdom at the time, was strictly against his heir joining the armed forces. But after months of Elizabeth's begging, the king couldn't resist, because she wanted to help her people and her country even when she was a teen. This fact makes Queen Elizabeth the only female member of the royal family to have served in the armed forces, and the only living head of state who served in World War II. If you're still not surprised about how incredible Her Majesty is, we have more for you. Check out our other videos about the queen and the royal family. Thanks for watching and stay awesome. Well, guys, I would I would say that uh, the queen definitely had a little bit of badass in her. Uh, I mean, if she if she's literally she's li she she was she served in in the war. She she uh, likes to shoot ch Tommy guns, uh, and even in old age, she was taking photos with a uh, with a. Uh, Machine guns. She's. She seemed like she had a sense of humor. Uh, you know, you, you know, she didn't seem as uh, maybe as stuffy as you would think. Uh, you know, in my in, the way books and movies portray kings and queens, they're they're stuffy, they're rigid, they're um, they're overbearing. They are, you know, ruling over the people with a with a with an iron rod and that's not at least, at least from the videos I've seen so far, that's not the impression I get. Am I wrong? I mean, 
I think I don't think the polling would show that she had an 80 percent approval rating if that was the case. And she seemed to have a sense of humor. She seemed to, um, you know, obviously she was the queen. She wasn't like uh, just some normal, you know, normal everyday person that you see walking on the street. But uh, she seemed to somewhat want to uh, connect with the people. I, of course, I didn't live over there in, in Britain, so I have no clue how she connected with the people. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't. But that's just the impression I get from these few videos I've watched. I'm going to watch some more to, to kind of gauge uh, who she was more than I have so far. Um, but anyways, um, oh yeah, and one more thing I want to say uh, from the last... Uh, I, what was I thinking this? Was this in the last video or was I think Anyway, I noticed that she seems to have a very stoic stare, a very stoic face, like the type of woman you you don't really know what she's thinking. Like she's just it's just this poker face is what I'd call. She would she would have been really good playing poker. Uh, because she she no one would have known what card she was holding. So anyways guys, enough of this, uh, enough of my rambling. Thank you for watching. Please Hit that like button and uh, help me uh, get the algorithm knowing my videos are out here. And also, if you'd like to follow my journey, learning about my English and Irish ancestry, um, see me react to more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button, guys. Help me grow this channel so that I can just have people. I'd love to have people in the comments recommending things that I could check out. You know, that would be really cool. Um, you know, people from Britain or Ireland recommending video topics that they'd like me to react to because I'm in America. I have no idea of all the, you know, maybe beautiful places or different political stuff or different geographical things, different people, you know, celebrities, uh, you know, funny, funny things coming out of Britain, whatever it may be. I have no idea of any of this, so I'm very new to it, and I, I want to discover everything, um, everything this British and Irish. I really do. Um, it'll help me understand myself a little bit more uh, on some sort of level, and and plus, I just I'm just really interested in in the British Isles. So, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, peace.